Hello, my name is Fernando, and as you know, I'm an airplane crash chaser. Today's uh, airplane visit involves a McDonnell Douglas A4N Skyhawk. It was based out of the 29 Palms uh, Marine uh, Training Base, and it's located in the uh, lava flow. Uh, it uh, crashed back in 1982, and I was here about a year ago visiting it, and at that time there were still some substantial pieces so hopefully uh, there's still enough uh, there to get excited about today. These rocks, although they don't look uh, that jagged, uh, they really are. They're, they're extremely hard on your shoes. When you're done hiking uh, here for the day, you can see a lot of cuts on your shoes where they think you can do them. Hopefully that's not going to be the case on the tires. I think I've got everything I'm going to need uh, for this hike. Uh, this area is not really uh, known for wild animals, so I don't think I'm going to need any type of uh, real protection unless there's a lava monster up there that no one hasn't told me about, but uh, I guess I'll find out. So on with the hike. The beginning of this hike, it uh, doesn't, doesn't look too rough. See a lot of love. I'm trying to find the easiest route. Some of these uh, little cracks. This is where the hike is still working. It almost feels like you're on another planet. first time I came out here, I uh, saw the, that uh, white pipe or a pipe like that one from a distance. And I thought, oh boy, this is easy. I found the plane. And when I got up close, I just thought it was a marker. So I realized it was that easy. Well, if that lava monster is not in here, it's definitely not anywhere around. Hear how those uh, lava rocks shift a bit. You can also uh, get your leg caught in here if another rock happens to get. Coming up on the uh, crash site here. You can see it up ahead. If you look around, you'll see some white pieces. South, came up on a little bit of oh, electrical wiring, some, uh, some type of a module, some type of a of a brain. You can see with the uh, all the wiring coming out of it, and that's the electronics of the day. Got some scattered pieces as well, way up here. Some more electronics. So these are all connectors and this probably was the uh, end cap of uh, one of those uh, modules down there no telling what I'll find a little bit further from the impact site some more small pieces in there yeah, still further up oh probably 100 yards north of the uh, impact site more pieces. Looks like part of the wing. Bracket of some sort. Some more of the wings. In this area, looks like we have some fuel fittings and some type of tank. Lift this up. Yeah, it's got some more. Filler and uh, 
inlets and the outlets and probably the uh, sending unit to read the level, I would think. I may be wrong on that one. Some more little components. Part of, this is definitely part of, a, uh, of an instrument. You can see the little dials there with the numbers. Almost like you would see on a uh, odometer on a car. Some more brackets. Still, even further away, find this piece here. Looks like it was part of the main structure, and this is about 200 yards away. Finding more pieces. I'm surprised because the last time I came out, I didn't go uh, this far out. Yeah, again, more of the structure. Look at that bolt. You can just see the quality of that bolt. The machining. Another small instrument landed way out here. Uh, we're talking probably, again, another probably a couple hundred yards away. Or more. Someone who's familiar with the A4 could probably look at these pieces and just by the shape and the assemblies here and the round uh, riveted area there, they could probably uh, tell you exactly what piece of that airplane was. Oh, here's the problem. Maybe the uh, pilot was drinking and driving and drinking and flying. Oh, that's just a Shasta. Must be from a visitor. This piece here, there's a little piece of yellow something or other in there. It's kind of a liner inside here. That might be the uh, liner for the bladder fuel. Another small piece here. All these pieces are just uh, scattered throughout. And those are the small pieces like that when I come out looking for an airplane that I start running into first. And that puts a smile on my face because I know I'm getting close. Like another interesting piece. That looks interesting. I wonder what that was. Yeah, see there again, more, more complexities. More linkages, more lock nuts, spacers. Uh, there's a lot of effort goes into making these airplanes. More up here. that is but it's pretty stout I always like seeing these uh, parts just like these uh, special lock nuts 12 point or all the machining that goes into this and this is a good old-fashioned uh, machining and milling not like the CNC's of today. And what you're looking at there is the uh, arrestor hook for a carrier landing. Looks like the end of it is broken off, unfortunately. So that would be a good souvenir to have or have someone hang on their garage somewhere. And then here, this actually looks like the uh, or it is the exhaust uh, portion, rear part of the airplane. See this wing, there's a lot of pieces, but it's a good size still compared to a lot of the smaller things you see around. What you're seeing here is the uh, parts of the fuel tanks that, uh, that were mounted underneath. Over here, got the rear stabilizer.
still has a lot of the mechanism on. Bit interesting here. Little mechanism for the short uh, actuator here. Either that's a short actuator or a short valve. As the slider would come through, it would push on this plunger that way. Little hook here. This may be a part of the uh, pylon, dropping bombs and what have you. Yeah, there's some more of it over here. Yeah, right here. This is definitely part of the uh, pylon system where the bombs would have gone right in here and they would release it. Yeah, a lot of pieces. Got the uh, landing gear. Pretty uh, stout. This is the uh, one of the wheels from the landing gear. They usually have all this wiring inside of it for uh, structural support of the tire. There's not much left of that wheel there. This really was an awesome little aircraft. I'm surprised you don't see it, it more in uh, private ownership with guys who have experience in flying uh, jets, uh, picking these up, uh, keeping them in order. Uh, it would be a relatively low cost uh, compared to what you're getting. Uh, they don't take up much room. They're subsonic. You don't have to worry about uh, breaking the sound barrier and getting uh, people upset. Uh, maintenance was relatively simple. And uh, they have them in the trainer version also. So if you wanted to get a two-seater and, and uh, ferry a person back and forth or a friend, uh, this would be a lot of fun to fly, I would imagine. Well, I had a pretty good visit here on this airplane crash site. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work my way back to the uh, truck through this sharp lava and hopefully I can make it back without breaking a leg. Well there's the truck. Make it back safely. Well I made it back in one piece. Didn't break a leg or hurt myself on the way back on that lava hike. I had a good uh, trip out there and I enjoyed uh, seeing that aircraft site again and I hope you enjoyed it as well and I hope you join me on another one soon. Thanks again. <laughs>